So before making this video, I was planning on including an RTX joke like, oh, RTX is turned on. But honestly guys, Metro Exodus was by far the worst game I've ever benchmarked before and I'm just so happy that it's over. I did finish benchmarking it with nine budget graphics cards though. So let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the brand new Metro Exodus with nine very popular used budget graphics cards here in 2019. And most importantly, with a system that you would actually pair with one of these GPUs. And if you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. Their 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career in coding. They don't waste time with a filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes, including UX design and QA testing. And most importantly, all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. So for today's video, I have nine budget graphics cards that we'll be testing with, and I have a feeling that a lot of you are rocking one of these, or at least a card with similar performance to one of these. For those of you that just want to see the benchmarks and don't care about my intro of these graphics cards, our testing platform, or why this was the worst game I've ever benchmarked before, then feel free to skip to this time frame in the video. I won't be offended. If not, then starting with the Nvidia cards, today we have the GTX 660 Ti, GTX 750 Ti, GT 1030, GTX 1050 Ti, and the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte. For AMD cards, we have the HD 7850, the R7 360, the RX 460, and finally the RX 480. For our testing platform, you guys already know we're rocking our trusty Dell Optiplex, which is rocking an Intel i5-3570 clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 450 watt power supply, and Metro Exodus is installed on a budget inland 120 gigabyte SSD. In my opinion, this is a perfect testing rig because this is a realistic system that you would actually pair with one of these GPUs and not like a 9900K. Moving on to our benchmarking method, we actually aren't going to be using the built-in benchmarking tool, which is honestly pretty dang annoying and made this video that much harder to make. Unlike Far Cry New Dawn, where the built-in benchmarking tool produced roughly the same results as actually playing the game, Gamers Next has put in the legwork and determined that there's actually a huge difference with Metro Exodus so unfortunately I had to benchmark the game manually. Before we get into that however, here's a chart showing what every card can do with the exact same settings, 1080p and low with DirectX 12 turned on. And sorry if this is a bit confusing, but this is indeed actually with the built-in benchmarking tool. I used the built-in benchmark for this comparison only because this way we could be as consistent as possible when comparing these cards side by side, but just know that the performance that you actually get out of these cards is much higher than these numbers here. One of the problems I ran into when benchmarking this game is that the GT 1030 just did not want to cooperate with DirectX 12, which is why you're seeing this crazy low number here. It tested perfectly fine with DirectX 11, mind you, but I honestly just have no idea what was going on there. One more thing to note before getting into the other testing is that I just want to apologize that you're about to see the exact same benchmarking run that I used for each of these cards. I found this level early on in the game and it seemed like a good run for testing, but with all the problems that I had, I just didn't have enough time to record better gameplay footage for you guys. But hey, at least with this method, you'll at least be able to see exactly how this game looked different with each of these graphics cards. All right, moving on past that nonsense, the first card up is the GTX 680 Ti. Remember the rest of these benchmarks are from actually playing the game now. And here in 720p and low settings with DirectX 12, I was only able to average 34 frames per second. Next up was the GTX 750 Ti. And with the exact same settings, we got pretty much the exact same result with 34 frames per second as well. Following that was the GT 1030. And here's where things start to get really weird. Also in 720p with low settings, I averaged 41 frames per second. Like I said, I still have no idea what was going on with the GT 1030, but it's definitely weird that it was outperforming the previous cards despite them all having the same amount of VRAM. Getting into a couple of better cards, the GTX 1050 Ti was up next, and in 1080p and medium settings, I averaged a smooth 51 frames per second. And to polish off the Nvidia cards for the day, the GTX 1060 followed up, and in 1080p with high settings, I got an average of 64 frames per second. Getting into our AMD cards for the day, the HD 7850 was up next, and we're back to our 720p and low settings, and with 
at this I averaged 32 FPS. Next up was the R7 360, also in 720p in low, and here I also averaged one FPS higher at 33. Following that was the RX 460, and in 1080p and low settings, I got a solid average of 58. And finally, the last card up was our quote unquote budget RX 480, and in 1080p, I could actually crank the settings up to ultra, and I still got an FPS average of 65. Overall, Metro Exodus was by far the worst game I've ever benchmarked. At the time of making this video, this game is seriously not stable as I crashed to the desktop or completely froze my computer probably 30 times to benchmark these nine cards and don't even think about switching up the settings without doing a full reboot of the game. I actually watched the gamers nexus video before making mine and he pretty much said the same thing which definitely felt good but yeah we both struggled and I'm very glad we're at the end of this video. Well there you have it that wraps up my metro exodus benchmarking video with nine budget graphics cards. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because later next week believe it or not we actually have some more benchmarking to do. You don't want to miss those videos.